there was an effort by the Turkish government to, in a sense, deal with the past briefly, shortly thereafter. For political reasons, obviously, they had the trials. Tell me something about the trials that happened afterwards and, and why that didn't become the new paradigm from the Turkish point of view. So tell me about the, uh, the trials and, and why that didn't, um, as I say, move, move to a new understanding on the part of um, the Turkish government and the Turkish people taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. In May 1915, the Allied powers get aware of, or, of what was going on in the Ottoman Empire and what was happening to the Armenian population, sent a telegram to the young Turk government in which they used, for the first time, the term crimes against humanity. It's a very, very powerful term. It's a term that then, 30 years later, would return in the Nuremberg trials and would then enter into to international law through the Nuremberg trials. And the American prosecutor, the chief American prosecutor, Associate Judge Robert Jackson, was well aware that this term had been used first in relation to the genocide of Armenians, that this was a crime against humanity that the young Turk government was carrying out. And in that telegram, the Allied powers said that they would hold responsible the Turkish government and its agents, that was the language of the telegram, and its agents for the fate of the Armenians. The con con conviction then to try the Turkish leaders and also to try German leaders for, the, for other atrocities committed in World War I, that entered into the post-World War I negotiations, peace negotiations at uh, the Paris Peace Conference. And the British captured quite a number of young Turk rulers, not, not the very top, but mid-level leaders, and began to, to institute trials. The new Turkish government that was formed after the Turkish defeat in World War I also started uh, to institute trials and indeed conducted quite a number of trials and there were a few convictions. That was the end of the story then, 1919, 1920. There was a huge amount of post-war political and military conflict in this area. The Greeks invaded, British and French were occupying the Ottoman Empire. Uh, a nationalist movement under Kemal Ataturk emerged in Anatolia and began to fight both the British and French occupiers and the Greek invaders. Basically, the British and the French populations and governments were exhausted after four years of fighting in Europe. There was very, very little popular support, almost no popular support for continuing military engagements in what seemed a very, very far off place, uh, Anatolia, the Middle East. Uh, the Americans were withdrawing from active involvement in European affairs. Ataturk staged some quite successful military campaigns. And again, the Western Allies decided that a stable Turkish Republic ultimately would be in their own interest and they just gave up on the idea of trials. But again, the language of crimes against humanity would come back in very, very important ways. And in some senses, one can say that the Western, at least rhetorical response to the Armenian genocide began the process of expanding the concept of human rights and human rights enforcement through the long course of the 20th century and into the 21st. So as tragic as the events were for Armenians, without a doubt, horribly tragic, we can at least say that there was the start of a response that would become institutionalized in new understandings of human rights. And where is that leading today? Will Turkey be pressured by the EU into dropping its position of denial? Turkey will, is certainly now being pressured into dropping its denial. It has been pressured for some decades, but the lure of entrance into the European Union raises the stakes dramatically for Turkey. I think of this sort of as Marxist-Leninist ideology around 1985. That is, nobody in the Soviet bloc really believed in Marxism-Leninism. It was a shell, and to everyone's 
shock, it all collapsed very, very quickly. I think that the, the, there's at least some hope that the Turkish denial of the Armenian genocide, it's so at variance with everything we know about the history, that that too can collapse very, very rapidly. And the lure of entering the EU may just be the catalyst for that. That at least is my hope.